Hi, my name is Dean Abney, and I'm going to do a little brief history on how I got into this crazy off-grid solar business. My background is electronics. I actually went to college for it. I started my apprenticeship as an electrician in 1974. After about two years, I realized that rope and houses was not going to be my future. So I wanted into more electronics. I was into battery-based power systems. And in my first house that I built in 1981, I actually put solar on the roof. Back then it was ridiculously expensive and not real practical. It was easier to run a generator. About 22 years ago, I was involved, I was doing technical for another solar company and realized that I really enjoyed it and I wanted to do it full time. So I started doing it full time. A little bit of background before that is I built my first house over here in Central Oregon in 97 and I built it to be off grid and I ran it off trace inverters. I had a little bit of problem with the trace inverters so I hooked up my oscilloscope to the output of them and sent them to the factory. The factory decided that I knew more about fixing and evaluating inverters and did their existing service center and they asked me if I wanted to be a service center for Trace and that was back in 97. I said I would be thrilled to look at it so I went to the factory for training. I spent weeks up there at the factory in Warrington, Washington with Trace and I was lucky to get to know many of the engineers and the awesome people that put together Trace Engineering. I was bit bad in the off-grid and battery-based. Ever since then, I've been designing, installing, and servicing the, some of the largest off-grid solar in the United States. Um, I've enjoyed it, I like it, and I plan on continuing to do it. As of right now, the best inverter by far that I've had to deal with is this XW unit which I was lucky to be involved in when the prototype was on the floor of Trace and Xantrex Engineering in Arlington, Washington. So I'm lucky to be involved with it. That's a little of my background. I've done a lot of teaching. I taught at Seoul West. I've taught at the Oregon Solar Expo. My specialty, obviously, is battery-based solar systems. Barnyard experiment in the shop to test each manufacturer's inverters for load capacities of inductor loads, resistive loads, and starting capacity in real world applications. We are starting off with a single XW6848. Now we have gone through and we have done the upgrades and the firmware upgrades and we have it tied to a laptop so we can monitor it but we are also doing additional monitoring. We'll be monitoring the amps and the DC volts from our battery bank. Our battery bank is 700 amp hours of lithium ferrite batteries. Now this is an old style belt drive air compressor. The normal running load amps under full load is about 11.2. The locked rotor amps is 90 plus. Now what that means by locked rotor amps is what's it take to start under load? So what we've done is we have a fluke meter here. We're gonna turn it on and we are going to measure the AC amps. We are going to do one leg as it's a 120 volt air compressor. So we have a 120 volt air compressor. We're using one leg only. So we are starting this compressor under load.
is it took 77.2 amps at 120 volts to start that compressor. So, let's do the quick math. And we're going to say how many watts. So we have 119 volts coming in times 77.2. It took 9,000 plus watts to just get that started. These are the kind of things that people need to understand when they buy a little inverter and they think that it's going to run their air compressor because it's only going to draw 10 amps. That's not what it takes to start it. You have to have a quality product to do this kind of power. We're going to put a 3000 watt load on this inverter. So that is approximately half loaded. So let's look at it over here. Our sine wave is nice and clean. Leg one is 11.8 amps at 119, 120 volts. Leg two is 12.4 amps at 118. So let's do the math. 12.4 times 118 so we have 1463 on L2 and we got 11.6 times 119.9 so we have 1390.84 on the other leg with another 9000 watts of starting load So we have 26 amps on L1 now, plus 3,000. So we got 3,000 plus watts on one leg alone, plus another 1,500 on the other, plus we started that. There's our microwave. There's our toaster oven. So we're drawn. We come over to the inverter. The inverter tells us 3.61 kW of load. And that is about pretty darn accurate. Well, we still want to make our coffee. So let's turn on our coffee. And now we have 36.8 amps on leg one only. Okay, when we come over here, and the inverter is telling us 4.48, which is accurate. This inverter adds leg one and L2 together, so it will always tell you the correct amount of power it's putting regardless of either leg that it's going to. This is a Solar 12. And we are starting it up. There's a lot built into this unit, plus PB in and out, that this unit will handle a lot of problems for somebody who has a small loads, no well pump, no large things like that. And I'll show you why pretty soon. Okay, Solark is active. Let's see what we have for voltage. Cycles. Voltage each leg is pretty close. One volt is nothing to be worried about. The Hertz looks good. The output wave pattern on the oscilloscope looks pretty good with no load. The first thing I'm gonna do to be fair is I'm gonna let some of the air out of the compressor and we'll start it with, say, 40 pounds of air. Same air compressor with approximately 40, 45 pounds of air. It will not start it and will not run it. Okay, so let's see how many amps and how many volts it maintains. And look at the wave pattern when this is plugged back in. Ready? I don't need that breaker. Here we go. 
what did we get down to here? What was this? Here we go. So we have 52 amps, 86 volts. The Solark is not the inverter to run motor loads. Okay, so we already know it's not going to work on the compressor. And if there was more air in the compressor, it would be even worse. So let's see how it handles resistive loads. How does a Solar 12 handle the morning routine? Okay, microwave. Start. Let's fire up this toaster oven. So it's maintaining voltage and it's maintaining a pretty good sine wave. Ready for coffee? All right, the inverter has overloaded and shut itself off. So, we were running the microwave, a toaster, and trying to make coffee. Now granted on one leg and it failed. So what we're gonna try and do is we're gonna try and switch it over and switch one of the devices to the other leg and balance it a little better and see if it works that way. You're gonna to have to hire an electrician if it isn't already on. A new modern kitchen, generally there are more two or more circuits feeding the kitchen. Absolutely. If you have an older home, this is not the case. What we have done is we've created a nuisance trip already. So we're resetting it. We're going to wait for it to bring the power back on. Well, you're already agitated because <laughs> most of the time the inverter itself is going to be in a separate building. And if it's snowy and nasty and raining, that's not comfortable because you're already in your jammies and your first cup of coffee, you do not want to do anything until you've had your first cup of coffee. All right, it took that long to reset. 25.4 times 244 volts. We have 6,197 watts. All right, what's it say for watts? That's awesome. If it's not orange, it's not That's right. Whoa! Okay. Well, apparently the unit is not capable of the 9,000 watts that it is rated. If it tripped to 7.8, buyer beware. A perfectly balanced load at 240 volt of 6.3 kW. We added 1500 watts to L1 only and it tripped the entire system. A unit that is a good quality sine wave, good clean voltage, very limited on its ability to handle loads. It will not handle the 9000 watts. It clearly tripped off at about 7300 watts and we maintain they can't we didn't have any voltage problems we were we so all the parameters that this thing needed input wise was met so it internally cannot handle anything more than i would rate it at about 7kw i think what i'm going to do now is i'm going to put 6.3 back on it and unplug the other additional heater and let's see how long it runs at 6.3 DC amps is up over 151. What is our wattage on there? 33.1 times 120.7. We have 39.95 on one leg. Let's go to the other leg. 122.4 times 25.3. And we're at 3,096 on the other leg.
Oh, Whoa! Okay. It is not capable of doing what it's rated. This unit is not new, but the toroid transformer that is behind this, by far, based on our testing, is far superior. Full output at the most efficiency versus battery coming in, in other words, idle watts with full power out, is half, less than half of the Solark. The surge capacity. When you can take a single 6.8 inverter and run it to 12 kW and it stays online on a single leg, this manufacturer is not giving you what we call peak ratings. They're giving you true world ratings. So if you're going to run your home on a reliable 20 year basis, there is no exception. They will run into nuisance tripping. It, it will not take out of balance. No system, because in our society, we are. this is not Europe, this is not Australia. We don't run everything on a single 220 load. Our stuff is 120, 120, 240, so split phase. So it is impossible and it's never going to be perfectly balanced under normal operations, unless you have a 240 volt load. Well, our homes are not 240 volt except large loads. Water pumps and motor loads, yes, 240. Everything else in your house, 120. Your range that you plug into your electronic control, your TV, your computer, your coffee pot, your microwaves, everything are 120. So you will be out of balance. This had no problem up to 12 kW of out of balance. We don't recommend running it that way all the time, and, and, and I'm not going to, but it has the ability to do it in a situation where you've got Thanksgiving or Christmas, and your home runs just fine 90 times out of the year, what are you gonna do when all the kids come over that live in, on the grid? They're gonna leave their lights on, they're gonna plug in their hair dryers, they're gonna do their curling irons, they're gonna run all these devices. This inverter is going to take that punishment and not be hurt. Nothing else here is going to take those out of balance loads for that family time. So what's important? Dependability, the ability to do the job, reliable, there's no comparison. If you tr have that trip, nuisance trip, you're gonna have to go around, turn everything off and tell everybody that they're gonna have to wait their turn and they're gonna have to start all over even though their hairdryer is, is offline and they gotta wait for it to come back online, they're gonna have to turn it off until somebody's done with their coffee because it will just nuisance trip again. If you don't remove the loads, if you don't remove the problem, it will take several minutes to get it back online and then it'll trip right back off again. You want an inverter can take that on a regular basis and not even trip. We have two pros side by side, 0.7. We have two pros putting full output 12240 at less than 50 watts. Okay, so what does that tell you? So if you're running dual pros and you have a security system and you have to have your power on 24-7, these two inverters are drawing a fraction of what this is just to run no loads. So how much power are you losing a day? So we've got two pros running at full output at 37 watts. So the efficiency, the size of the system, the battery capacity, is significantly less taxed with this unit. Heuristic loads kill systems. Yep.
exactly the same. All right, so the first thing we're going to do is we now have two pros in parallel, and we're just going to kick its butt. How are they taking the balance? 20, oh, that's 6,000 watts. All right. We're going to put 16,000 on these two. You guys ready? 8.33, 8.8. How many DC amps? Pull 400 amps off those batteries. Running over 16. Plus, actually, we're running almost 17 kW. Hmm. We'll run out of battery before we do inverter. Hmm. So, let's really test it. Well, what's the worst it going to do? Kick off? Hmm. Watch. Rush current. All right. So we have 400, and we want to do in rush. So 406. Let's see what it goes up to. Starting the air compressor. Did it go up? One, two. Three. We did blow it finally. Oh, we blew the circuit breaker. Oh. Huh. So we yeah. blew a 250 amp breaker <laughs> before. Anything else fails. We got a four wire warm. I run everything here off three of them. The house, the office. We run a plasma cutter, a five horse stand up belt drive. All of this, everything runs off three extra red devices. We have a 16, 17,000 watt load on two XW Pros. And we're going to just turn the batteries on to them. Not turn anything off. Oh, wow. <laughs> 405 amps. We paired them up. We ran them. We took two XW6848s and ran it at over 17,000 watts and they handle it and they still started an air compressor that the Solark wouldn't even start with no loads. 